Pick your class and learn your battle points. Because it's time for the Star Wars Battlefront Podcast. Welcome to episode 190 of the Star Wars Battlefront Podcast. I'm your host, Sage Goodwin, joined by my brother and co-host, Sam Goodwin. Hello there. In this episode, we're going over the Scarif update and the very sad news that we got alongside it. Let's get started. It's over, Anakin. EA has the drive for money ground. So let's start off with the, the sad news so we can end on the update. After two plus years of free content... The vision for Star Wars Battlefront 2 is now complete. Hello there, this is Dennis Brenval from the Star Wars Battlefront 2 team. For more than two years, the team has deployed 25 free content updates that have shaped and expanded Star Wars Battlefront 2 into something truly special for Star Wars fans. We've introduced game-changing heroes, fan-favorite reinforcements, exotic planets, and epic new ways to play across all three cinematic eras. We've also shared in your excitement along the way. As developers, it's incredibly fulfilling to see players of all kinds living out their Star Wars fantasies in our game. Today, we're bringing you the details on what's coming to Star Wars Battlefront 2 in the next content update named Battle on Scarif. Since launch, we've brought new content in the form of free updates to the entire player base, delivering immersive Star Wars battles you can play solo, with friends, and against others across the entire Skywalker saga. This vision will now be realized as we complete our return to the Age of Rebellion, which we started in February. And only had two updates with. <laughs> Looking beyond April, we're transitioning to a phase where the servers, in-game challenges, recurring events such as double XP, and more, and game support will carry this broad and rich Star Wars gaming experience into the future. This means that we're moving away from delivering regular content updates as the game lives on with the players and our community. We're looking forward to hearing your stories for years to come. They turn off the life support. The journey lives on. Developing characters, worlds, and experience set in this amazing galaxy that is Star Wars is an honor, and it has continued to be a remarkable challenge and an ultimately rewarding journey for the entire team. Knowing that we have a passionate community of millions of players and Star Wars fans just like ourselves along on the ride is the greatest inspiration we can ever have. Community means even more in times when we need to stay physically apart. That is why we are ending the game. They don't say that. This is why we encourage you a bit extra to share your hashtag stay and play stories on social media. We hope that Star Wars Battlefront 2 and the upcoming Battle on Scarif update will inspire you to keep playing and sharing. May the Force be with you, Dennis Brenval, on behalf of the Star Wars Battlefront 2 team. Also, the uh, forums are ending on May 28th. This news sucks. It does indeed. Seriously, it makes me not want to play Battlefront. Like, I was playing last night to ex- experience the update. We're recording this on Thursday, April 30th. It's super sad. A lame ending. Definitely. I would definitely say this was a terrible way to end such a good game. The lack of communication put the community into darkness and then hyping it up in such a, a poor way. Hyping up, getting the community really invested in this update and then ending it. Yep, they say it's going to come out, they delay it, then they announce when it's coming out, it's came out, and then they end the game. Like, how much worse can you do a community? No, the, the timeline is they announce an update for March. They delay that to mid-April. And then they delay that to late April. Which is a few days then, before May. <laughs> and then they end the game. <sighs> So I wanted uh, to show, uh, share something that uh, a friend of the podcast, Split Screen, uh, found. This was on the Battlefront Reddit, which is really sad to look at, to go back and see what, how hyped everyone was for this update, and now that it's ending. Uh, ben Walk actually said, the thing you have to remember is that the team at DICE working on Star Wars Battlefront 2 is made up of Star Wars fans just like yourself. As a team, we got together to watch episodes of The Mandalorian and would have done the same for The Clone Wars had we not been at home. We went to the movies together, we went to Celebration together, and so forth. This is a team that loves Star Wars, and as part of that, please understand that for us, we wanted to give you everything. 
simply because we wanted it as well. Unfortunately, sometimes things don't work out that way. But don't think of it as the team deliberately not releasing something just to spite you. Nobody wanted more for this game than those working on it. And uh, split screen, uh, Mark says, uh, seeing this just makes me sad. It really feels like the dev team really wanted to continue giving us more and more content. I understand the next Battlefield is going to start ramping up production, and it's obviously DICE's baby but it's left so many of us with nothing. Yeah, and, and on that front, so they've moved all of their team to work on Battlefield 2021, which sucks to end the franchise and then go to another franchise. It, it's really sad, and Battlefield fans know that they're always going to get another one. Battlefront friends, on the other hand, uh, Battlefront fans, on the other hand, have no idea. We have no idea if a Battlefront 3 is going to happen. We obviously really want that to happen, but sadly... We'd have no idea. Yeah, we saw something not nearly as brutal as ending the game. We saw some changes coming up after this update because they didn't really have any communication afterwards. Mm -hmm. But even if they ended the game, what we wanted was an announcement, which would have happened before ending the game. So yeah, release this and then <laughs> it sucks. Like I, I feel so every, every time I go to play Battlefront, I feel sad. It makes me sad and makes me not enjoy the awesome update that they brought us. And on that update, we'll get into this later. It doesn't seem like an ending update. It seems like they they were planning so much more. And that leaves me. Let me put my conspiracy hat on for a little bit here. I believe that EA was the the EA and the uppers in Dice were the real reason why it got canceled, not the developers on the team. It was because they they didn't plan it outright to make money, and because of that, they blamed the game, even though Battlefield sold way fewer copies than Battlefront. It's still getting a sequel. Right. Yeah, because I like um what he said in his um message there. Was it a Reddit post? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, no, uh, uh, the the Discord. Sorry, okay, the Discord. Discord. Yeah, Alfred well, Reddit Discord. Because he said they wanted to keep adding content, you know, along the lines of that. So I don't. And plus, it's not the developer's job to say whether the game's canceled or not. It's mm -hmm. the uppers and dice and EA if they want to make an executive decision. And the fact that they 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 ended they they announced ending support for Battlefield a week before this was actually announced. Is sad. So Battlefield 5's ending, and Battlefront friends were probably like, man, this would be awesome to see. Maybe this means we're going to get even more content that they're actually going to be pushing Battlefront as like a, a, a headliner instead of the redheaded stepchild. But nope, they both got ended, and Battlefield's continuing. It's so sad to see. And on the front that EA has produced so little Star Wars games since it got the license. We've had Battlefront 1, Battlefront 2, Jedi Fallen Order. Didn't they sign it? It was a 10 year contract at first. They have a 10 year contract until 2023. Okay, so yeah, it's a, it's almost ending. But is that renewable or is it Disney just going to absorb that, you think? We don't know. I mean, three years is good enough to build another game with well, you know, way more than enough time to do another game. But the more they wait, the the more that time's going to wear out. And I'm not sure if they're... Because Jedi Fallen Order did really well, and mm -hmm. Battlefront did really well, like more to the later half of the game. Yeah, the they, they said it in um, the earnings call that Battlefront, uh, the Celebration Edition, above and beyond performed what they expected, as well as Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah, so all the all the games did well. Like Battlefront 2015 did really well. Mm -hmm. And so so the three games are successful. I'm just... Maybe they're, they don't think they're going to be able to make enough money off of it. And the way they uh, formatted Battlefront 2, this one is... Like, they see 25 free updates. So they don't have more of like the DLC that they were relying on the in the previous game to, mm -hmm. to make more money. But I mean, they did make the Celebration Edition, which, you know, produced some more revenue, I feel like. But it also nicks the possibility for further money making because you couldn't buy the skins because you unlocked everything with the Celebration right. Edition. Yeah, and I guess they, they did try to shut it off because you know how outrageous it would be at this point if they pushed, you know, you know, uh, DLC that paid DLC. Mm -hmm. I feel like the fans would, for good reason. That has they would... been a, a big discussion topic in the community recently. That uh, would would you, as a player, buy paid DLC if the game continued support? I know I personally would, and I've seen a lot of other people say that. Yeah, I would because now they have some incentive to you know have a deadline because there's paying customers now and they're making money off of it, so it should be better quality as well. So I mean, I mean, I would pay DLC for that. We did it in the previous game, and I wouldn't have a problem with doing it in this game either. Definitely, especially if it gives us quality, because we're getting 
what we pay for, which is nothing in these updates. <laughs> yeah, it's it's such a sad thing. About on on the terms of this podcast, we're going to continue for uh, at least a little bit longer. My goal is to at least get to 200 episodes, but we'd like to continue after that. And to continue after that, we're going to need your help. We're going to need your support in terms of content ideas. And if you would like to see us going forward with the podcast, and if if maybe not uh, covering Battlefront, if there was another game that you'd like to see, maybe this become, instead of the Star Wars Battlefront podcast, becomes the Star Wars gaming podcast or something along those lines. But it'd be great to hear your thoughts on future topics and future um, ideas for that. I have a, a documentary idea that I would like to see in terms of the, the development process of Battlefront 2 and interview a bunch of developers and put that together, as well as a bunch of tutorials now that Battlefield or Battlefront isn't changing in any way. So we can really get into the nitty gritty on how to play certain games without it being uh, drastically affected by nerfs and such. Right. And at this point, if even expanding to other Star Wars games, that would just right now at least give us fallen order to branch off in but then you can get to the speculation of star wars games and yeah and we, we've been doing we've been covering other star wars games since this podcast launched and we've got the the lego star wars game uh, the star right. skywalker saga that's coming out that we will definitely be covering going into the future so we want this podcast to continue and uh, we've got a bunch of collaborations going forward but it'd be great to hear what you'd like to see from the podcast as well for sure and, I mean, EA needs to do something with the, the IP at this point. I mean, if... Please don't pull a valve and stop it, too. Right, and um, even if they can't do anything, Disney needs to delegate it to some other development company that yeah. can... Yeah, I've, I've been thinking about this over the over the course of the, the day since we got it. Is DICE is obviously incapable of focusing on two games at once. So make make sure that they focus on Battlefield. So, because they they can't really handle a live service game, but maybe form a new company or use a new someone. subset of EA to develop. There are multiple different developer de- developer sections in battle in, in EA. Yeah, I understand that. So they've got they've got Respawn, which is busy with um, Apex, but maybe there's another developer that or they is can in the even works. just you know bring a new team in like mm-hmm. create a new team create the battlefront team and if they if they don't want to do this we might just have to wait it out till 2023 if they don't want to do that and then have disney take it over and see if they can get it to a new publishing company that would do it better and or, or star or wars it up is like it was before where they just found developers to make the star wars game instead of specifically EA. right developers. yeah own, one publisher owning it that would be better and definitely produce a lot of quality because you have different aspects for Mm-hmm. But Star Wars is one of the, if not the one of the biggest, like pop culture money making items. So I don't see why they're not messing with the Star Wars franchise more. I mean, you just slap the name Star Wars on anything and it sells like thirty times more, pretty much. And a, so it's not a Star Wars problem; it's an EA problem for sure. Yeah, it's for someone that for 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 we've been in in this community since. Before the first game launched in 2015, I believe we started November 11th or 9th or so, somewhere along those lines before the game came out. So we've been here along for the ride for a while. Uh, this year will be our fifth year in the community and we've made tons of friends. We've had so many great experiences. I made a thread on Twitter that was kind of like going through our just a snippet because you can't really do a whole thread on all of the amazing experiences in this community about uh, from the start of the podcast to now. And this community is one of my favorites. It's something that got us into a community like this. This was our first experience with something along these lines. Our first podcast is this podcast. And some of my best friends are from this podcast and from this community. So it's really sad to see this community that brought so many people together was more than just a game to be ended in such a sad way. And if it definitely feels different from when Battlefront 2015 ended because it wasn't necessarily an ending. They were just silent about it and we all knew that they were going to make a Battlefront 2. But at this point, we have no idea. It seems like a final nail in the coffin for Battlefront as a franchise, and that's so sad. I would love to see another development company come in, like we were just saying, and all they do is Battlefront. It's not a subset of DICE. It's not a subset of anything. It is this company that runs Battlefront, and then they shrink it. They make it smaller. They make it more reasonable to make. Yeah, because Battlefront, the name of the franchise, the best format for online things you don't need other online star wars games because this one can cover just about anything and as far as the single player type game modes i mean 
Jedi Fallen Order was done extremely well. So they can have, you know, a team focusing on Battlefront and the online aspect. And then another team focusing on the the offline single player aspect. Definitely. And I would love for this game to continue. But going forward, it, let, let's just talk about how they handled that. So we went there. There are many options that you can look at, and as soon as as soon as we all woke up, the whole Wayfinder team got on a voice chat, and we were kind of talking about what this means for our channels, what this means for the future of our content, what this means for the future of Star Wars games. Like what actually happened? It was it was a really depressing call, but it was good to have those friends around. We had Ethan Danger Cat, we had Sammy Boy, we had Split Screen, we had Ark Ross. Uh, we got all these people together, and we were kind of just like what and the, sen- the consensus we came to is there, there are multiple things that could have gone wrong my my theory one of my theories is that ea got involved which obviously they did they did because it seems like the the developers really wanted to continue and another another one that was more wholesome could be that this was planned all along and uh, the reason that they delayed it was because all of the, the crap going on and they wanted to wait until it was later before they ruined our lives <laughs> I really hope that this franchise continues and that we can continue to grow with it because this the, there was so much potential there was so much possibility for this game it was set up for for it to be able to continue for a couple of years more there's so much there's so much content in the Star Wars universe Mandalorian would have been a great uh, option and then the next day you know what EA does they go in and they, they tweet this this is Thursday the day after the update dropped the uh, two days after the announcement that it, Battlefront's ending And they say, we're extending our Galaxy of Heroes stay and play activities through May. We've upgraded our daily login bonus. As well as announcing that the Mandalorian is now added to Galaxy of Heroes. When all of the, everyone in the community would have loved to have a Mandalorian season. Yeah, I mean, they they can't blame it on lack of content because Disney's out here doing, you know, crazy amounts of work in the Star Wars IP. I'm Mandalorian, two seasons, second season's about to come out. A third already confirmed. Right, so they have three seasons there, and then the Clone Wars, just they're dropping new episodes weekly. And are ending uh, soon. And, yeah, we just had the last installment of the Skywalker saga. We have speculation of other movie franchises in the Star Wars universe. We have the Obi-Wan show set in the back burner. As well as a rumored uh, female-led Star Wars show. Right, so, I mean, there is no lack of content within this so, I mean, it's just got to be a money thing. And it'd, it'd be fine if they ended this game with the third one out coming, which we we just mentioned earlier, but just really unfortunate. It really is. Like like I said earlier, this is a, a fantastic community. Everyone that I've met has been so nice. All of the people that, all of you awesome listeners make us come in every week and greatly enjoy it. Like, this is such a, a magical thing. And the developers feel the exact same way. They, they came in and they were working on Star Wars. Everyone that I've talked to in the community were just mind blown by that fact. And the ability to continue working in the franchise was so amazing to them. And now here we are with it ended in a whimper, it seems. Just as it seemed it was picking up. Everyone was really excited. Everyone was speculating on what could be in the next update. Everyone was expecting on uh, just thinking about what could possibly continue and it's just not really it's not a good image for the game either because it started off a terrible start i mean super bad publicity around it and then it you know they did the revamp it slowly started building up just to cut it back down mm-hmm. so it started terribly and it ended terribly yeah it i definitely mean feels how like that. how worse of a of a situation the game can you have I mean, that's like the worst case scenario and then you have all the developers like teasing things like uh dennis says um Battlefront Updates. And Battlefront Updates just recently tweeted this. It really sucks to have such an empty future for Star Wars games at the moment. When Battlefront 2015 ended, we already knew a new one was in development, making the future much more bright, whereas now we have nothing in for the future of the Battlefront franchise. When it comes to other games, the only one coming for certain is LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, saga this month, or this summer. Project Maverick seems very far out, and with no official info yet, and a Fallen Order sequel is just rumored, and if true, would probably be an early development. He says, my bad. There doesn't seem to be a confirmed release window other than 2020 for the new LEGO game. And Guillaume responded says, uh, responded to a tweet that says, thanks for everything. If a Battlefront 3 comes out, would you return? Hashtag Battlefront 3 win. And Guillaume says, if I can, I will, of course. Yeah, the only, like maybe speculation i can see about the future of this game in particular is maybe when the pandemic slows down and the new battlefield is kind of slowing down 
they could maybe return for a couple more updates. Other than that, I mean, it's it's not looking too bright. Yeah. And Ben Walk actually responded to another one. It's so sad. They, it seems like all the developers are really hoping for it to continue. And uh, someone has asked, why, does it ha- why did it have to end? And Ben Walk says, uh, ask myself the same question on many an occasion. Yeah, and we're on the same boat as uh, Elliot here. A friend of the podcast, America, Hammer the Senate, uh, replied to uh, Elliot. Says, you were awesome, Elliot. You brought me into Battlefront. I hope that you don't stop. May the force be with you. He says, I have no plans to stop or disappear. Things will definitely change, that's for sure. But my passion for Battlefront and Star Wars games in general is still there. And my coverage of it won't end. So we will be here. Overall, though, like, not to, to beat a dead horse, let's let's go into slowly but surely getting to the acceptance phase. Let's go over some um, some of the, the responses that we got from it. Dusty Ricketts says, Love the new update other than the 5,000 kills as Maul to unlock his new skin. Everyone's trying to play as him now, and it's just a pain. I wish they would change that to just get 5,000 kills with any, other, any dark side heroes. And we'll get into this just a little bit. But we'll go over some of the thoughts on our uh, Scarif update as well. So friend of the podcast, Gio, uh, says, Ray's new skins are absolute perfection. Out of all of them, hers were my favorite. Played co-op on Scarif a couple of times, and that was fun. In terms of support ending, it is a bittersweet moment. This game is what got me into gaming in the first place, and the community is wonderful. Everyone who worked on the game put their hearts out for it, and you could tell. So a huge thank you to them. Yes, a huge thank you to all the developers for this amazing experience for so many awesome opportunities. Daniel Schilling, which we have a couple of emails from as well, uh, responded to the tweet I, I asked for thoughts. It says, there's not much more I can really add. I hate being right. Gut feeling won this time. A big disappointment as soon as the game starts going forward, it stops. The worst thing is we'll never really understand why. This game was doomed to fail from the start, it seems. Yeah, as soon as we got the news, he sent an email. <laughs> it says, I'm not the one to say I told you so, but... I hope you're both well, so I told you so. After my last email, I had a feeling something was up. Too many folks had left the project. I really don't have too much to add at the moment. I never wanted to end, but had a feeling it would. I'll simply just say, bollocks. And then a further email, the why section. Hey guys, I've sent a few emails, still trying to get my head around all of this. I'm now into the why questions. Why the celebration edition at Christmas? The game seemed to be going places. We've played the game from the start. How did the newer guys feel who paid 40 to 50 bucks a few months ago why no communication beforehand this was a proper kick in the balls why the sudden easter egg skin challenge this was a great idea but we're getting no more kind of pointless addition really why the 5,000 kills for mall easy for some tough for many this will keep me going for months why the effort to go into the scarif map a great addition a great map but too little too late i'm just a little miffed i guess Anyway, I'll leave you alone and continue to support the channel. Kind regards, Daniel. Yeah, so the, the thing that a lot of people are scratching their heads about is the, the Celebration Edition. Because it seemed like it was a, a turnaround for the community. Seems like the pivotal point that this is the this is the pointer at, at Battlefront getting so much more support. Like It seemed like the thing that was going to push Battlefront into the future. And it was just an omen for death of the game, it seems. That would just lead you to believe that it was a recent thing like in the past couple months because they wouldn't put all that effort into you know doing uh, essentially a Mm re-release just to have it in in a few more months so it it just have to be has to be one of the upper ups in either ea or dice that decided to end it in the in the past couple months yeah, definitely. Now let's talk about the update. So Scarif is great. Scarif is a really fun map, though it looks a little bland. It's, it's strange. The the, re- the previous game is actually very saturated, look like you're on a beach. But this one, it just seems very gray and flat. Kind of like the future for Battlefront. <laughs> uh, I mean, Scarif is Scarif if you played the previous game. But it's it's a bigger map. It's a much bigger map than the previous one. And also, they fixed so many of the freaking tree walls. Right, yeah, that was a problem in the last game. I was I was running through bushes, and I was like, oh my gosh, I can actually run through them and stand on top of them instead of getting st- stuck and then killed. But yeah, great map. It's really fun to play. I'm not a huge fan. I'm, I'm kind of mixed on my thoughts on the, the new change to original trilogy, Supremacy. On the original trilogy, Sup- Supremacy, you can play ships, which adds a layer of hectic 
nest, uh, a layer of pretty uh, hectic stuff going on. But you also don't transfer into any ships, which was one of my favorite parts of the Capital Supremacy format. I really enjoyed that. Now it just seems like co-op with a bunch of people. Yeah, I'm. I feel I like the um the previous supremacy in the previous game better. Seemed a little more straightforward. This one is oh my so grindy. Takes forever. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of this new supremacy format for sure. So the the planets that you can explore on for Capital Supremacy on the original trilogy, obviously Scarif, Hoth, Death Star 2, Tatooine, and Yavin 4. I was really surprised someone actually responded to me. I I, I was convinced that um supremacy was on Endor but it's not which is really weird because I love playing uh, co-op on Endor. Instant Action though has had a great update you can now actually play um, you can cycle through supremacy you can play that offline as well as attacking and uh, defending missions missions for co-op offline as well it's actually really fun that, that's how I explored uh, Scare because I was I was there waiting for like 15 to 30 minutes trying to get into a Scarif map, and I only got in once, which was very frustrating. So I just yeah, they just need to up the um the rotation a bit more. I remember last time I tried to get in the map, the, a Geonosis map, and it took forever. I had just mm-hmm. kept canceling and canceling. Yeah, so I I decided to just go offline, so I wasn't able to get that part. Also, it's very hard to get into a game of Tagadana, which you have to to unlock some well, one of the uh, appearances. And you can also play the MC eighty five Star Cruiser and the Resurgent class Star Destroyer on co op as well. And they're renaming co op to co op missions with the positivity and reception surrounding Incident Action. We've decided to expand it further, bringing a new option to offline play. Incident action missions are based around the co-op multiplayer experience, allowing you to play with three friendly AI allies and take on an enemy team made up of AI using our existing co-op missions. Faction select will be possible, enabling both attack and defend gameplay options, and the mode will be supported by every co-op location we have within the game across all three eras. Heroes vs. Villains will be receiving a new planet in April as the battle between dark and light reaches the salty mineral planet of Crate. This is one of our most requested HVV maps to date, so it's really exciting to be bringing it to the game mode. The combat area will be focused inside the main hangar with the blast doors open, letting in the sunset outside. See, quite a solid update for the game ending just moments. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we we got a lot of content in it, but man, it's it just seems like it was setting up for so much more, not like a final send off. But overall, it's some good changes. Like yeah, I'm really happy with the map ad- additions. It would it'd be a good update if it wasn't the last one. You know, mm-hmm. if if I was getting a last update, I wanted to you know introduce some more heroes or villains, definitely, or some reinforcements, right, or even like the new era type with the Mandalorian. You know, so yeah. I mean, solid update if the game wasn't just ending. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And now let's get into the skins, which were the main focus. So we've talked about the the Scarif being added, the the changes to instant action, which are great. Love those. It's a good addition for the continuation. I just wish you could play split screen on them. That's, That's my only downside, or invite people to come with you. But private matches would have been great. But now let's get into the skins. We've got uh, Darth Maul finally, finally, after two and a half years of waiting. It takes the game to end to get this skin. <laughs> we have Robo Legs Maul. Darth Maul has been a hero who, in terms of new appearance requests, has consistently been one of the most prominent, which is why we are incredibly excited to announce that he will have an appearance based on Star Wars Rebels available to him, complete ro- robotic legs. I mean, it's really cool appearance. I would have preferred the Clone Wars appearance, but it works. I really like how his arms are exposed, though. Yeah, but it takes 5,000 kills with Darth Maul. Yeah, so it's unlocked by a milestone where you have to get 5,000 kills as Darth Maul. By the time you're done getting the kills, the next Star Wars game is going to be out. (laughs) But yeah, It wouldn't be a problem if it was just the kills... But you have like, to do online, and everyone's playing game modes where right, you can exactly. get Darth Maul. Right, exactly. That's the problem. And and even when a new hero or villain comes out, that's the problem. Everyone is playing it, and it's not like games like Apex to where it's more, you know, just smaller. I know it's a different format, but still, 
You can but have it, multiple characters. Because there's only three, um, and it cycles taking turns, which is what this game should have. Mm-hmm. It's either whoever gets there first and spams the clicker gets the hero. So if there was like a turn-based system, which then again, it would take even longer for the people spamming it. So, I mean, there's no win here. Yeah. I mean, you're we're just going to have to wait for everyone to get the skin so you can slide in mm-hmm. or... Yeah, it was uh, like Dusty Rick had said. It'd be much better if it was just Darth Dark Side heroes. Right, get five thousand kills easier. as Dark Side heroes, and five thousand kills is a lot. Oh mm-hmm. my gosh! It's basically it would... like a middle finger to the community. Like, oh yeah, you wanted the skin. Well, here you go, but you gotta spin forever. Even if it wasn't like everyone was picking Darth Maul, it'd still take forever. Even if you had free reign on it, I mm-hmm. mean, that's a lot of farming. Some people regardless. have jobs. <laughs> <laughs> who are playing this game and cannot play hours on end. Yeah, as much as I like this skin, I mean, I, my gosh. That's going to take a while. Take if forever. we were on PC, though, you can get a mod that lets you get the skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really... So we've got a lot of things to be sad about. But one thing I'm really excited for is the future of modding. Because when Battlefront 2015 ended, there was like there wasn't a huge, strong modding community. But man, is there a strong modding community for Battlefront 2. Yeah, the modding in 2015 Battlefront was to trick people into thinking the skin was going to come out. Yeah, it seemed. and th- th- you were really limited on what you could do in, as far as the assets go. But now, though, there are people like adding Baby Yoda and using the BB-8, so it's pretty awesome. Another skin that we're getting is Rey Skywalker, Sith Eternal, which... Oh my gosh. As far as Palpatine skins go, this is not the one that I wanted the most. It's cool, but it doesn't really not what we wanted he's got a red shirt underneath and it's basically the same yeah i mean that's what they're the king of adding skins and changing one pixel on it and mm-hmm. calling it a new skin all the race skins look the same it seems this is the one that modders actually did better than dice did yeah we wanted the chancellor palpatine i mean is that too much to ask for mm-hmm. we want i'm the senate some palpatine. varying skins from the eras if you yeah like if that if is you like, can't see the color red he looks exa- exactly were, the same if you ask me to name five palpatine skins that wouldn't even come to my mind. It wouldn't mm-hmm. even be a possibility of me thinking. I mean, it's understandable because the new game came out, but like, it's not very recognizable. I believe we also have uh, another skin for Ray as well. Uh, the, one of the Ray skins you have to unlock through an Easter egg. Yeah, Ray's probably gotten the most love skin wise. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe rivaled by Lando or Han, Han but. <laughs> Yeah. You also get the short trooper uh, appearance, which is actually yeah, free. Those are really, really cool looking skins too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've been really happy with that. It's cool to see. Overall, this is a good update. Like it's, it's a solid update. I'm not like crabbing on the developers at all. I'd like to send a strong thank you to all of them for doing all of the work that they did. Dealing with us as a community is not easy and they did it wonderfully. So I really want to thank them all. And uh, keep tuned for Cinematic Captures channel for a video. Wink, wink. That's going to be coming out soon. We'll be we'll making a uh, appearance there. But yeah, thank you to all of the developers. This has been a solid update. I really wish we could continue the game. Uh, we will be continuing our podcast and talking about all manner of things. Battlefront and Star Wars gaming may continue to be called the Star Wars Battlefront podcast, but we're definitely going to be covering other games as well. Hopefully we get more games in the Star Wars franchise soon add it to another thing that's crappy about 2020 (laughs) but i'm really excited to get over the hump and be able to actually enjoy scare because right now every time that i jump in battlefront i get sad it's just the the potential of this game and all of the people that we've been able to meet with has been great and i'm really really sad it's ending we've got a lot more to go over in terms of the scarif update but we'll go into that in a little more detail next time we'll be going over um battlefront 3 as a possibility and what that can mean as well I know that's a topic that a lot of people are interested in. What 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 we thought, what we think in far of the possibility, and we're going to be collaborating with a lot more people and talking about a lot of different things going forward. And uh, I've got big plans for a documentary on Battlefront that I'd really like to get going. We need to collaborate with uh, Big Harvey Newman as well. I think that's about it for this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for sticking around and listening to us throughout these years. Whether you are new, a new listener or an old listener, we, we appreciate your support. And we thank you to everyone who's helped us out on Patreon and PayPal and follow us and talk to us and uh, made friends with us. We, we thank you all so much. It's been a great time. And we look forward to uh, finding a new normal and and the turn in the world where Battlefront is no longer getting regular content updates. 
but we will be continuing podcasting. I've been your host, Sage Goodwin. And I'm Sam Goodwin. You can follow us on Twitter at SWB Podcast to stay up to date on all things Battlefront Podcast and more. You can also follow us on Instagram where we'll be uh, sharing memes and uh, clips of the podcast as well. That is at SWB Podcast. You can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Battlefront Podcast or on PayPal paypal.me slash tie-dye sheep t-y-e-d-y-e-s-h-e-e-p helping us out financially would greatly help us with the continuing of this podcast so we'd greatly appreciate it and uh, keeping things going on that front a great free way to support this show is through leaving a review on itunes apple Podcasts, stitcher wherever uh, you can leave podcast reviews we would greatly appreciate that we have over 100 with a five-star average We greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much for that. And we'll also be going over uh, next week. We want to talk about uh, some of the stuff that led up to this news, as well as more thoughts on the Scarif update now that once we play some more of it. Our Gmail is battlefrontpodcast at gmail.com. And also our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash the Star Wars Battlefront Podcast. So ways that you can leave uh, topic ideas is through Instagram, Twitter, email, YouTube comments, anywhere that you'd like to. We'd greatly appreciate it. You can listen to the show on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find this show. As always, thanks for listening, and may the Force be with you. Testing, testing, one, two, three, one, two, three, welcome. You ready? Ready, ready, ready. Mm -hmm. It's over, Anakin. Rip. <laughs> okay. EA is um, Obi Wan, and then Battlefront's Anakin dying in the lava. <laughs> I have failed you, Anakin. I have failed you. I should have known the Jedi were plotting to take over. Anakin, Chancellor Palpatine is evil. From my point of view, the Jedi are evil. Well, then you are lost. <laughs> I have the high ground. You underestimate my power. Don't try it. 